Okay, hi, it's Liz again. Um, I'm here today to discuss the oral history reader readings <laughs> and also the two websites that we looked at, which were the studsterkel.org and the Story Corps. Um, I guess I think I'll begin this discussion by talking about the oral history reader. Uh, for this week's assignment, we had to read chapter one, and chapter one was pretty much tracing um, the historical roots of a writer, Alex Hal, Hal something? I'm not sure, I don't have the book in front of me right now. <laughs> but um, pretty much, like, he was describing his experience in dealing with, um, like, his African heritage and how oral history has played such a significant role in um, African culture. And he was saying how the way he had said his name, or like I think it was a fam some family member of his, I think it was Kinta or Kinte or something like that, how he was able to talk to the right people who were able to put him in contact with people in Africa who from there were able to um, trace his lineage through a gre a great griot? Gre not sure. But that's the African name for a... Um, for an oral, like a storyteller. And what's absolutely amazing is how, just by t using our voices and like telling stories, how we can really truly encap like capture a moment, capture a picture. I mean, it's this, our mind and like writing stuff down, like, our, our, like what we write on paper is a reflection of what's in our head and like all the memories and stuff that we have. So, I mean, if you put an oral history together correctly or in, like, a certain way, you can essentially capture what you would capture on paper um, through using a live person and just using their voice, using their body, their facial, like, gestures. I think, like, using an oral history, like, using oral history is even more effective in that because it really captures the, uh, I guess maybe the word would be ambiance of, like, a situation and, like, the elements that really make the moment the moment. So... Yeah, um, for my oral history reader, I'd like to propose doing the topic on unemployment. Um, my father actually got laid off um, from Sharing Plow, which is now Sharing, I think is Merck emerged at this point, in, I just want to say 2008. Um, he, basically what happened was he was the director of finance and research for, um, for the company. He did like... Like, whatever the money that the scientists needed to, like, produce medicine and to research and do that stuff, he got them that money. Um, with the the economy failing and, like, lawsuits and them, like, restructuring the company to merge, um, they ended up eliminating his position. And he had been with Sharing Plow for 22 years. And he, you know, went to Brooklyn College, has his bachelor in, biz in I think, business from there. And then he has his MBA from Pace University, and he was with this company, like I said before, for 22 years, and he was at a pretty high salary, and then with the, he lost his job, and then not even a week later, the economy collapsed, and he's been having a hard time ever since um, getting a job and whatnot, especially, he's, the problem is he's overqualified. And I noticed, you know, when he was losing his job, people in our neighborhood, like, left and right, which, you know, is a pretty well-off area um, in East Brunswick, left and right, people were losing jobs, and these people were, you know, high, had high positions and, you know, have high degrees at wherever they are. And it really affects, it's not only affected my life, but it's affected my family's life, it's affected how... I am able to interact with my friends, it's affected other people I know, so um, I really want to use this oral history project to kind of examine how unemployment affects not only the person, like their emotional well-being, but also those around them, and like, what are the implications for that? Um, I think it's important to have an oral history reader on this because of the times that we're in right now, um, with, you know, the election that occurred in 2009 with Obama. You know, our, our hopes are for a better economy and our hopes are that, you know, the job market will become better. And because the job market is so crappy right now, you have students who are in college staying longer in college. People who would normally go off and get master's degrees are kind of debating because they don't know if they're going to get hired because they'll be overqualified. And then there's the whole idea of, well, if you don't get a bachelor's degree at this point, 
the jobs that are available years ago, you'd be under, like, underqualified. And there's this whole issue of, you know, the young are going out into the field, but at the same time, those who should be retiring because of this horrible economy are staying and working longer. Um, I know my friend um, was telling me how she's worried because she's graduating next fall. And in the nursing industry, normally there are nurses that, you know, hit a certain age and they're usually gone, but they're staying now. So it's kind of like, well, what does it mean for us? So I think it's important to really examine just to see, like, how unemployment kind of affects us emotionally and kind of our well-being. Um, as for experts, I guess I would interview my father. Um, I have other friends and family members who have experienced this several times throughout their lives. Um, I mean, I don't know as far as experts, what kind of, I mean, um, economic expert, I don't even know. I don't know someone like that, but I guess, I guess it would just because I'm using an emotional appeal, maybe I would talk to people just who've experienced it or like people whose families impacted by them not having a job and whatnot. Alright, well, that's it for now, so bye.